and welcome to Mr. 96's Pop Reviews. I'm Mr. 96. If you're wondering why my voice sounds a bit different right now, well, last month I bought a mic stand to improve my audio. So thank you to my loyal viewers for encouraging me to improve myself every day. Speaking of improving, I think it's time to improve my pop review formula as well. Look, I enjoy making funny jokes about pop music like anyone else, but I feel like I haven't done a good job at providing viewers a thoughtful and meaningful experience. Pop music inherently relies on trends, so if I'm gonna make content that can hold the test of time, I need to give you an honest and thorough breakdown. A great place to start is talking about an artist I haven't really reviewed yet. Yeah. It's just me, myself, and I. Life. This is BB Rexa, or as my buddy Mr. 69 likes to call her, BB Rexa. Eh, to me, she's just BB Rexa. I'm more of a Haley Steinfeld guy myself. Anyway, she has the typical Kesha, Julia Michaels story of someone who's been around for years as a songwriter or producer before having a solo career of her own. While people usually think her breakout hit was Me, Myself, and I, her actual breakthrough came about a year earlier from a song I think you're familiar with. Yeah, if you didn't realize, those vocals on the chorus are actually BBs. I have my own problems with Nicki Minaj's performance here, but the one thing I've always praised about this song is that hook. I think she was also on that Martin Garrix track a few years ago. Yeah, that wasn't bad. So based on what we know so far, this woman seems to be one of those premier guest vocalists you get to sing your hook. But, can she handle a song as the main lead? Well, she has a song that's reached number two on the Hot 100, so let's listen to BB Rexa's big solo hit, Meant To Be. Baby, lay on back and relax. Huh, BB's voice is a lot deeper than I remembered. And she seems to have developed a southern accent all of a sudden. No, apparently she brought in Florida Georgia Line as guest vocalists. But are they really guest vocalists? Remember that Louis Tomlinson song where BB was listed as the guest artist but pretty much dominated the runtime? Yeah, things seem to be working in reverse for this one. BB is listed as the main artist, but if you do the math, Florida Georgia Line actually have more lines on the song than she does. It is meant to be. Yeah, not only do these guys get the entire first course to themselves while she has to share the other courses with them, they also take it upon themselves to interrupt her goddamn verse. Boy, make me believe. Oh, hold up, girl, don't you know you're beautiful? And really, getting dominated by Florida Georgia Line is not a line you'd like to hear, which, yeah, let's actually talk about them. Baby, you a song that made me wanna roll my windows down and cruise. Florida Georgia Line are the face of bro country. As a result, many people refer to them as the worst thing to ever happen to country music. While I'm definitely not a fan of Cruise, or them as a whole, I've never thought their music was god awful. Well, except for This Is How We Roll. That was just embarrassing. But mostly, their music to me is just mediocre. Surprisingly, they were even good a couple of times. I thought their collaboration with the Backstreet Boys was surprisingly nice. And remember how I said earlier that I was more into Haley Steinfeld than BB Rexa? Well, Florida Georgia Line managed to collaborate with Haley Steinfeld as well, and that song was legitimately great. So what I'm trying to say is that Florida Georgia Line alone does not make a song dead on arrival. But it really doesn't help when a song about a girl finding love in a hopeless world is taken over by the dude who only gave AJ of the Backstreet Boys a grand total of three lines. Oh, hold up, girl, don't you know you're beautiful? I swear that line has got to be a meme. But you want to know what the crazy thing, the craziest part of all this is? I think Florida Georgia line might actually be the best part. I know you probably think I'm out of my mind right now, but I really find the Florida Georgia Line portions of this song to be the most enjoyable and memorable. I mean, Tyler Hubbard is auto-tuned as hell, but his vocals mixed with these nice piano chords give this song a pretty friendly and welcoming atmosphere. Ironically, the parts that don't work are all from BB Rexa. But then again, I shouldn't be surprised because I'm just gonna be honest, I don't think she's that good. No broken. 
I want to be fair. I don't think she's a bad singer, but most of the time, her tone of voice just bothers me. It's nasal, sounds like she's just talking down to me, and worst of all, it sounds like she's doing this all on purpose. I call you, but you never even answer. I tell myself I'm done with wicked games. In fact, I know it's intentional. It's not a foreign accent since she was born and raised in the US, and she happens to sound perfectly normal in the song I'm reviewing. I don't mean to be so uptight. While her voice is definitely more tolerable in this song, where BB's part falters is in its writing. She has no personality traits outside of wanting to be saved by two country hip-hop wannabes. Which is a questionable desire to say the least. Also, I have to point out that the percussion in this song is just awful. Even for artificial drums, this is poor. Not only do the bass and snap sound plastic as hell, but they're distracting and jarring when played against the rest of the mix, thus adding to the song's already cheap quality. Okay, after all of that, I think I've finally come down to a verdict. I actually kinda like it. Yeah, to me, this falls in the category of dumb fun, and there's nothing wrong with that. Granted, certain parts could have used some polishing, but it's not sung in a cynical or arrogant manner. I certainly understand why this song has such a strong backlash, but I never found myself reacting to it in a disgusted manner. BB Rexa is more tolerable than usual, and Florida Georgia Line has some good moments here and there. Maybe it's a bit bland, but my experience was definitely in the positive, as overall, this song is relatively harmless. I give it a 6 out of 10. Well, I hope you enjoyed this pop review. Pop songs may come in numbers, but there's only one. 96. If it's meant to be. Before I go, I want to let you know that I'm graduating college this semester, and I plan to celebrate in May by reviewing a classic graduation song all the way from the year 2000. Huh, that long ago. What song could it be? As we go on, we remember all the time. Aw, oh, shit.